Welcome to another edition of Grace and Grit. I'm Pastor Bruce Hayward. Dorothy, my wife, and I serve as field directors in Asia, Southeast Asia, and live in Konkan, Thailand. We're glad to be with you today. I'd like to read a text that came to my mind as I was pondering what I could share for a devotional today. It's a text found in Malachi chapter 3, the last uh, book of the Old Testament. And it says, But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. A few years ago, someone shared a story with us. There was a, a lady who was attending a women's prayer group, and someone else at the group read this verse, these two verses. Something about them kind of haunted her, and when she went home from that weekend retreat, she phoned a silversmith and said, I have some questions. Could I come down to your shop and talk to you? He invited her down and she went and, and began asking him questions. The first question she asked is, when you refine silver, do you sit down? Because the Bible text said he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he said, yes, I do. And she said, why do you sit down? He said, because when I'm refining the silver, I have to hold the silver in the fire. And I have to be careful because I can't leave it there too long or it can ruin the silver. She said, well, why do you have to put silver in the fire anyway? He said, because the silver I get is not as pure as it could be, and the, more, the purer it is, the more valuable it is. And so I melt the silver down in a cauldron, and as it melts, the dross, the impurities, come to the surface, and I skim them off. She said, well, how do you know when it's done? He said, oh, that's easy. When the silver is all done, I can see my face reflecting in it. Jesus is looking for a people who are reflecting his character. Today, I got a, a little insight watching people reflecting Jesus' character. Here in Thailand, like many most other countries of the world, we've been struggling with the COVID-19 virus. It's been very light here. There's, uh, we've had very few deaths and very, really very few cases. But we're still in lockdown and many of our church members teach English conversation in some of the, many of the schools around Khon Ken. Um, with the COVID-19 lockdown, most of those teachers are out of work. And no work, no pay. Most of them are Filipinos, and so they're kind of locked. They can't go back home, they can't work here, they can't go anywhere, and so they are out of work. And that means they have no money for utilities, no money for rent, no money to buy food, no work, no pay. So our church has been, uh, has stepped up to the plate. The Acts Church, the early Christian church, was a church where they held everything in common. Nobody count, counted what they had as their own. And so we have been feeding and paying the utilities for many of our church members in an attempt to sustain them until they can come back to work. Every two weeks, we go to the wholesale markets and we have some, one of the disadvantages has become an advantage for us. It's a disadvantage for Thailand, but a, a, an advantage for us because, because they can't export their food, the prices of food has dropped really drastically. So we go to the wholesale fruit market, the wholesale vegetable market, and buy large quantities of food that we can divide up and send out to each of these families that are needing food. Um, we've been blessed. We were, we, today we calculated that we fed 14 families for two day, for two weeks, I should say, for about 175 US dollars. That's a blessing. 
but to watch the people. We've divided the, them all up into teams, so they all have to work together. And today we had about eight or nine people here just sorting and praying together and, and packaging up and dividing up the foods. And to just watch them work together, there is a love, there's a great, uh, an incredible uh, camaraderie that has developed. And then on top of that, we also feed, uh, prepare about a hundred, we started at about 150 boxes of food, um, hot food that we would give each day at the train station to the community at, where there are long lines of people waiting to be fed because they're out of work or many of them homeless. We're now up to between 135, and, I'm sorry, between 235 and 250 of these boxes of food that are prepared each day to give out to the community. This is what God wants us to be. It, it's an amazing thing that something that can be destroying our world, many people out of work, but God can use, God can bring good out of evil. And while it's evil for what's happening, it can be good because we can be seen as a, a Christ's hand reaching out, demonstrating what real Christianity is like in what we do to help people. I'm so grateful that God can use even us to reach out. And no matter where you are, you don't, I don't know what your situation is, but perhaps in your community, there are people that need help. People that are being, um, they're out of work. They don't have the money to, to cover their groceries. It's not the government's job alone to take care of, especially the church. We need to reach out and help our church family if there are people in need. God is great. God is gracious. And He provides. He stretches our dollars. When we think we don't have any resources, He says, trust me, I can make it. If He can feed 5,000 with a couple loaves of bread and a few small fish, um, He can do for us as well. So, wherever you are, trust God, put your faith in Him, and He will see you through. Let's pray together as we conclude. Heavenly Father, Thank you for the opportunities that you give us to be your children, your hands, your feet. I pray that you would bless each person listening to this little devotional this morning. I pray that you would uh, guide their feet, give them opportunities to be your witnesses as they serve you in their community. Thank you for the privilege of serving you here in Thailand. And as we, uh, as we work through this pandemic time, I pray that the influence of the church here would spread and that the people who are living in darkness have never heard your name would come to know you because of the, reach, the outreach of your people. May Jesus be lifted up and many come to know you as we serve you. So bless us today. Keep us in the hollow of your hand, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Somewhere on this earth, in the heart of a foreign land, a family with a passion is living their mission plan. Bringing God's truth to a hungry, thirsty tribe Knowing well their lives are always on the line Missionaries need missionaries too They need the prayers of loved ones They need love from me and you And when they just like Christ Make the ultimate sacrifice Someday in heaven they'll thank you Cause you're a missionary too Someday in heaven
heaven, they'll thank you for the things your prayers have brought them through. Your mission is accomplished. Oh, thank you. You're a missionary. You're a missionary too. You're a missionary.